Number 43. Oh. That's me. So, what do you think? It tastes great. And no animal has passed gas in its making. In today's episode, Mr. Burns faces a moral dilemma with his new diner, while Lisa and Bart investigate its practices. Homer deals with his own inner conflicts, seeking guidance in dreams. The episode kicks off with a scene about Mr. Burns and his bad night's sleep. He wakes up claiming everyone hates him, and Smithers shows up. After his boss brings him breakfast, Mr. Burns complains it's not to his liking and orders his dogs to attack his boss. Now, Mr. Burns and Smithers are at his factory. While walking, he complains about needing real food until he bumps into Homer, who's carrying a crusty burger. Then, Mr. Burns takes Homer's burger and opens it to see what's inside. After inspecting every item in the burger, he decides to eat it and starts creating memories with it. Later, in Mr. Burns' office, he's eating several burgers until Smithers mentions his weight tripling. When Smithers tries to stop Burns from eating another one, he ends up in a secret passage and discovers some missing men. Then, Smithers returns, and as Mr. Burns continues eating, he starts feeling unwell and faints. Uh, my heart! This could be my last moment on Earth! <laughs> now, Smithers and Burns are at the hospital. When Mr. Burns wakes up, he says he's hungry and asks for a burger. When he gets one, the nurse says he can't eat meat because it could kill him. He gets sad, and Smithers informs him he almost died. When he asks about people's reaction to the news, Smithers opens the window and a crowd is celebrating. Mr. Burns feels sad realizing nobody liked him. After Smithers makes a call, Mr. Burns gets sad knowing that when he dies, nobody will miss him and he won't leave a legacy. Then, Smithers reveals he had a great idea with Professor Frink. At that moment, a robot arrives, showing a burger developed for him to eat without meat, allowing him to profit. Trying the burger, Mr. Burns likes it and talks with Smithers about how it could change his legacy. He says he'll achieve something he thought impossible, being loved even after he dies. Oh, do you know how Edison felt on that incredible, magical night? The next day, they admire a model of Burns's diner, discussing opening thousands across the country. The only thing missing is deciding on a name for the diner. On the day of the grand opening, the store is named Awesome Burger. The journalist was covering the whole inauguration, but the scene cuts when a tragedy about a river is announced and the reporter gets hit by it. Then they go back to the Awesome Burger inauguration. At the moment, Mr. Burns is doing a draw to see who will be the first person to try the vegetarian burger. The number drawn happens to be Lisa's, and she tells everyone that she's tried all kinds of vegan meat and wishes luck for it to please her palate. Upon tasting the first bite of the burger, she says it tastes incredible and praises it to everyone around. Number 43. Oh, that's me. So, what do you think? It tastes great! After saying that Burger could save the world, she hugs Mr. Burns and hands the rest of the burger to her father. Trying it, Homer also finds it amazing and hugs Mr. Burns. After the hug, Marge does the same, celebrating the fact that she no longer has to cook and can now teach Maggie how to talk. So, the whole family hugs together with Mr. Burns, making him feel loved, something that had never happened to him before. Then. Mr. Burns comments that he just needs a spokesperson, and at that moment, Homer hands him a card with his name. Mr. Burns agrees. My card. Smithers, keep your nods to yourself. Yes, sir. And in the next scene, Homer is hanging high up, and before the filming starts, a businessman arrives and tells him to sign a contract. After some explanations and imagining some scenes, Homer signs the confidentiality contract and soon, filming begins. While the commercial is airing on TV, Marge watches while folding clothes and comments that it seems like Homer will need new pants since his size was increasing. Then, while talking to Alexa, Marge ends up selling some shares of Awesome Burger and upon discovering how much she earned, starts thinking about what she could spend that money on. Now it's down, down $200. <gasps> Us again! And now, in Mr. Burns' office, Smithers arrives with critiques about his diner, and so far, they're only receiving praise. Mr. Burns feels like a hero, and, to celebrate, 
grabs a drink, but ends up flying when he looks at it. Smithers a toast. <laughs> During the night, Homer is sleeping while Marge is on her phone and discovers they have $1,000 extra in their account, which makes her excited. She decides to turn on the television and on the news, they're talking about the Burger Wars. They show a literal animation about the Burger Wars, which annoys the journalist because they spent a fortune on it. Yet, he didn't get a raise himself. Next, he announces another news, which is about the awesome burger diner ruining its competitors, showing how its competitor, Krusty, is resorting to advertising about his business. Then, we see Krusty crying because his advertisement isn't working, and he starts talking to Sideshow Mel, who is honest in saying that his business was terrible and his product was inferior. But Krusty insists on his ad, and as the sign of his diner rolls down the street, the Simpsons family drives by in their car, while other people on foot are filming and laughing at Krusty's situation. Then, Bart from inside the car starts looking sad, saying that his superhero is a failure, and says that Mr. Burns will take Krusty out of the market unless he does something. However, Lisa refuses, saying that Mr. Burns is doing a good thing, and while looking at a billboard with Burns' ad, she has a vision of everyone dying if they continue eating Burns' burgers and becomes sad. Then, Lisa goes to Mr. Burns and starts telling him that she has some not-so-good information for him. He runs away from her, but she insists on following him, and he orders his dogs to attack her. Seeing that Lisa was getting along with the dogs, he makes it clear to her that he won't listen to her. Let's be clear, young lady. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm never going to listen to you, and I have sophisticated technology to ensure that happens. When she gets home, Lisa grabs the remote and turns off the TV Marge is watching, startling her. Her mum starts asking what's going on with her, so Lisa explains that they need to find a way to shut down Awesome Burger for good. But Marge questions what would happen to the shareholders if Awesome Burger closed. Lisa looks around and sees various signs of stocks and money that Marge was investing in the diner. She herself gets scared and leaves as quickly as possible. Then. She grabs her tablet and goes to meet Homer. She starts telling him that Mr. Burns' diner is operating using endangered plants from the Amazon rainforest. And she reminds him that the forest is the lungs of the world. And if the diner continues, the whole forest will be destroyed. Homer explains that every generation has its to-do list and tells her what tasks her generation would have to do. At that moment, Lisa realizes she won't get her father's help. And so she leaves completely irritated, not understanding how he can sleep at night acting like that. Then, during the night, Homer ends up having a nightmare. And as he finds himself in the dream with various known burger names, he reveals that the company he works for was doing something bad and asks for advice on whether he should do something about it. The moon, playing the piano, appears and gives its opinion while singing which makes Homer wake up from his nightmare and say that his dreams always teach him more than many books. And with that, he already knows exactly what he needs to do. All your values, I won't let you sleep tonight. As dawn breaks, another grand opening of a new Mr. Burns diner is happening. And behind the curtains, Burns spies and wonders why people are showing their teeth to him. Smithers explains that people were just smiling at him and eager to see him. Then, they talk about Burns needing to keep doing good things. And with that, Mr. Burns agrees and decides to go all the way. Nearby, Homer tells Marge that he's going to take down both of them. But Marge asks him to think about the shareholders first. He refuses and approaches Burns and Smithers. Homer is told that the audience will ask some questions, but before going on stage, he is reminded of his confidentiality contract and the words he couldn't say and the gestures he couldn't make. After that, Homer is on stage and everyone applauds him. Then, Lisa, disguised, is the first to ask a question. When she questions if the burger was made with plants from the Amazon rainforest, Homer answers yes. Then, a new question arises and Homer uses clever words to reveal the truth. Quickly, the journalist turns on the camera to record everything that was happening. Amidst it all, the audience revolts against Awesome Burger, 
and from the crowd emerges Krusty, celebrating for having won without needing to do anything. Then, Bart appears to call him his great hero, and with that, Krusty asks his assistant to organize them to get back into the burger business. In another corner, Lisa arrives, telling Marge she was in a big conflict, but Marge questions about this conflict, and she ends up commenting on her stock sale and the profit she made. At that moment, Homer appears questioning what she was talking about, and Marge disguises what she had just revealed. Meanwhile, Smithers and Burns flee from the chaos, and Smithers discovers that Burns was happy. When he questions about it, Mr. Burns explains that it was good to be morally correct, but evil always wins, and now he was happy to be able to go back to being who he was. The two make plans for the next prank they will play. Closing the episode, in the post credit scene, Homer is sleeping and ends up having a good dream with the moon singing about him having listened to his conscience and now feeling good.